Okay, thank you, everybody. This is Anthony with The Movie Blog. I'm speaking here with Sal Velez. Uh, we're going to be talking about, well, we're going to be talking about your new film, if you don't mind introducing your film for us. Sure. Um, I just had a film called Switch Up um, that came out at the uh, South by Southwest um, last week. It made its world premiere there. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a good turnout. We had about Almost, I want to say, twelve hundred people in the theater, give or take. Uh, but that was a good, good receiving, good reception for the movie. Great, great. I know I saw the film. I loved it. Um, I'm really curious. Like, you know, I know you. I I initially discovered you uh, <laughs> through Black Summer, right? Oh, and then I started to look backwards, and I'm like, oh man, this guy, this guy's <laughs> got a lot of experience. So, you know, I'm curious. You know, you you. What drew you to acting, right? Or what drew you to the industry? How did you get started in this? You know, you know, when I was when I was a kid, you know, like I said earlier, I'm I'm a Puerto Rican family. My grandmother has 17 kids, you know, so I had a lot of tough, a lot of aunts and uncles, and we grew up in Chicago. My grandmother raised me, and um, you know, at that time, I mean about five four or five years old i used to watch like sammy davis jr you know on tv and i used to watch like danny k and you know bing crosby and these big these big uh multi uh performing uh personalities they do comedy they sing they dance and i said man that's incredible i used to love richard Pryor, love love richard Pryor, and, and uh i uh i decided that i was gonna just just to get extra food, I would start learning how to re like recite a Richard Pryor show or I would learn how to sing a song or learn, you know, some jokes and person impersonations and stuff like that. And um, I would go to my grandma's house and while all my cousins would be fighting for the next plate of food, <laughs> I would get, you know, start singing. And my aunts and uncles would be like, oh, I, he's, that kid's got some, he's got something there. Let him, let him stay for the weekend. <laughs> and, um. You know, and, and that was kind of like my, in my early years, that was my, just my beginning to being able to be accepted and invited into other people's homes, you know, like family and friends. And um, because my family was a broken family, but I, I thought, you know, hell, if I can make people sing and laugh and, and, and I thought that was my, my, um, that was a gift. And, um, and I didn't know, you know, I, I just did it for food, like I said, you know um kind of a survival thing and just just to just because it was full i was born with it you know born with the energy and um i didn't know this but later on when i'm like 28 years old i'm a grown man i'm i got a uh, son and daughter ready and i'm working i got a house and um i was working as a machinist in chicago and i got invited to second city to audition and um i auditioned against 700 people who were there improvers going to, you know, coming from all places around the country just to go to Second City, Chicago. And um, I got in front of this, I got on stage, I got in front of the uh, producers and um, and I said, I really don't know what I'm doing, but they said, just do what you do. And I made them laugh and I made them smile. And they said, go home. After that, two weeks later, they called me back and then it went from 700 to 300 to... 50 to three of us and that was me my my good friend um lamorne um uh from, from lamorne um uh my god uh, I'm, on, I'm i'm sorry my mind is just so so uh under the weather these days um but lamorne and christina anthony um and um you know we lamorne morris from new girl mm -hmm. good friend Sorry, Lamorne. I just couldn't. He just, I just couldn't. I don't know why. But um, we ended up winning scholarships. Uh, that was around 2001. And uh, from there, improv has been my life. I've, I've done it. I ended up joining the, the touring company. I ended up getting in movies. And um, I ended up, you know, commercials and TV shows and, and being drug out to Los Angeles. And just, you know, everything just kind of like just took off and i could say i am now 23 years professionally working as an actor knock on wood and um 
in the union for that long too. So I'm, I guess I'm a veteran. <laughs> God bless you. That's amazing. Yeah. So thank you. you. You've got a really busy career, right? You've done like things like I've seen, like you, you've got experience in what was it like a uh, hand of God. You were in Lions MC. Yeah. Um, I think you were in that Ben Affleck movie. Um, yeah. The way back, the way back. Yeah. So I'm just curious, like, do you have a favorite memory or maybe a favorite experience working on a particular film or TV show that audiences might find interesting? And, and if so, what made it so special? Well, they're all great. They're all great experience. They really are. Um, and, and every character is just as genuine. And, and, I, and I feel like, um, you know, I feel grateful to bring that character to life. You know, you're, you're every, every movie, every project is its own family. And um, I think the one that that stood out to me, well, well, I had been I had already worked with so many great names. I mean, you you name it, Kelsey Grammer, Gus Van Zandt. I mean, I had, you know, just a list of people that I've worked with. But I um, uh, I had been doing a lot of off Broadway and a lot of Second City improv. And I had been doing a lot of theater and movies all at the same time. And in about 2011, I end up shooting a movie called Savages with Oliver Stone. And Oliver was, I was a big fan of Oliver Stone for, you know, like, like most of us are, you know, it's just like, he was like a legend for me, you know? And, um, and on that cast was, you know, Benicio Del Toro. It was John Travolta. It was, um, Salma Hayek, Blake Lively, um, you know, Taylor Kish, I mean, you name it, it was an A-list, you know, A-list overall, the DP, the, uh, the crew, everybody was A-list. And, um, and I got the chance to work with Oliver Stone and I just was, you know, in the beginning, I thought, wow, you know, I can't believe he chose me to be in this movie. And every day he would come to me and he'd say, Sal, you know what, you know, and he would be in the lunchroom, the cafeteria eating. And he called me and he said, Sal, you are a real good actor. <laughs> and, and I said, <laughs> I said, man, am I being pranked here? You know, like this is a joke on me. You know, like why would he just pick me out of the crowd to come and tell me this? And um, but you know what it was is that I had been working so hard as an actor up until that point, And I had no, I had no, um, uh, oh, I'm so sorry. My words are gone today. I had no, uh no no verification of what i who i was i was still working and when you're working a lot you don't have anybody kind of like come and put the stamp on you and say you know what you are a professional and you belong here and um he certified me he made me feel like i belonged um he you know held me up with the highest respect and um and i went toe to toe with every you know, great actor. And, and it took, it took, I guess the validation is the word I was looking for. It took about, um, I say about nine years of training and just working as an actor and so many shows and so many auditions and so many yeses and so many no's to finally be validated by Oliver Stolen. I was like, okay, I guess I'm finally doing something right. You know, and that was, that was a memory that always stays in my head. So that's really good. You know, you, I, I, I'm hearing this and it sounds like you got to speak with personally with a lot of folks within the industry over throughout um, throughout your career. Can can you share maybe like a piece of advice or maybe some wisdom that had a profound impact on you and your career? Sure. Um, you know, um, and forgive me, audience, I, I've been I've been under the weather. I don't know where it came from, but the last two has been really got me. Um, but take your time. Uh, I think that, um, from, you know, I'll give it, I'll give a story to, to, uh, to you guys to understand when I was in second city, uh, around 2004, 2005, I was already in the touring company for many years. I had already traveled around and performed, you know, and keep in mind, you know, uh, Tina Fey, Rachel Dratch, Chris Farley, Tim Meadows, they all had left in around 99, 2000. Uh, Keegan Michael, good friend of mine, said we, he was there at the same time. And, uh, you know, you're surrounded by the best of the best, right? And 
I kept having to miss. At that point, I was in my conservatory years. Part of your scholarship, you got to be in conservatory, which means that your group finally gets a chance to start performing on the main stage. And it's mm -hmm. a it's a very big deal. And keep in mind, at that time, you know, for every 12, 13 people, every core in the group, there was only one or two minorities. Mm -hmm. That's it. And I was always one of the minorities. And that was it. If I had another one with me, it, it, I, I'd be lucky. So our, obviously our comedy is different, right? Our timing is different. Mm -hmm. What they think is funny and what I think is funny, two different worlds, right? Um, but I was working so much as a professional actor at that point. I was already doing commercials and I was shooting movies and I kept having to miss rehearsals. And I kept having to miss you know, the, some of the sketch writing, you know, as we developed the stories and the sketches. And so when I would finally come to the performances, they would write these small parts for me. And I said, man, am I, am I, I'm being blackballed here. I said, I don't know what's going on. I, I can't, I can't get a, you know, I'm like, I'm funnier than this. I know that, you know? And I went to my director, Michael Gelman, and, um, who has been, you know, a long alumni of, of Sega City for many years, since the 70s, back to the Belushi days. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was telling him what was going on. We're sitting on the stairs, the steps of Second City and just talking about it. And he looks at me and he says, Sal, just just get the fuck out of here. You know? And I said, wait, what? You know, I said, excuse me? You know, I, was, I wasn't ready for that. And I was offended. <laughs> Because I felt like, you know what, why, why is he telling me this? But what he, would he, he broke it down. He says, Sal, he goes, you, he goes, people have been traveling all around the world to come here to study improv, to learn something that you were already born with. You had this before you walked in and you don't need to be here any longer. He says, if you're here, it's because of charity. You're a professional. You need to take that to the next level and he goes don't be like myself he used himself as an example because you know when saturday night live was developing you know he had an opportunity to go to new york and do all that stuff too like with the with the bill murray and and all those guys but you know he played it safe and what he was telling me is like you know hey you 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 already got the goods it's time for you to to graduate from this don't worry about what these other people think and what they want to do, you know, and he saw it clearer than I did. And I, and again, another point in my life for validation, right? Because, you know, uh, I guess for the young audiences, a lot of times they don't realize how good they are. Um, and they don't realize the talent that really is brewing inside of them. And I think sometimes they, they, they are, they're timid or they're shy or they're taking a long time to bloom. And um, so I, I I always recommend surround yourself with people who are telling you the truth. Surround yourself with people who are also fighting for the same things, you know. Um, you know, uh, if you're a singer, surround yourself with other singers. If you are um, a comedian, surround yourself with other comedians. Um, and then have have some type of mentorship. You know, when you choose somebody, when you look at a mentor, you look at somebody's a career that you might want to follow. You know, um, so I give you an example. Somebody somebody out there might want to follow my kind of career. You know, mm -hmm. when I was young, I wanted to follow the career of. Uh, you know, I thought that um, you know um, uh, Charles Bronson was 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 something. You know what I mean? Clint Eastwood. I thought those guys were like you know, hey, I get into a nice fist fight and rough and tough and being a western you know so you want to follow the chops you know what i mean and mm -hmm. and and when i and now in today's day and age with with the internet and all the resources that we have you know you could do your research on anybody all the way back to their ancestors you know so you don't have to be you know before 10 years ago you had you really had to dig to get information so now you really can dig and and, and find out Hey, this person's from this town. This person grew up in the Bronx. Oh, this person grew up in New York. This person grew up in Queens. You know, um, also this person was a singer before before they became an actor. This person was a musician before they became a comedian. You start getting all the stuff and you start realizing all the things that you have in common 
and you start to develop your career and you look at the choices that they were making, you know, the good and the bad. And then audition for everything, man. Audition for everything. If you can, read for everything. I mean, I was doing Shakespeare. I was doing Masterclass. I was doing, you know, um, musical theater. I was doing off-Broadway shows. I was doing as much as I can before I even hit TV or film. And um, making my skin and making my, my muscles just as strong as they possibly could be, you know. So I recommend that, that everybody's out there. Just keep the work. Make the work about the work and, and keep it going. And don't be discouraged. Just keep it going. So I'm curious now. You mentioned mentors. Yeah. Who is the unsung hero of your career? Who's the, been that person that's been your, your ride or die or your rock? Well, I have a lot. <laughs> I have a lot. Um, I follow, you know, I found myself to be an actor's actor. You know, I really, really like, you know, there was, because it was an improv, I thought that, that, um, I thought all of us were, you know, the, the same way, you know, we studied the same craft, but, you know, you have guys who are doing method acting, you have Meisner technique, you have, um, you know, you have Strauss, you have all these different techniques that people study and an imp improv is really a root of its own. Mm -hmm. Well, I found myself guys like Robin Williams was tremendous for me. Um, you know, even Jamie Foxx, because I was a singer and piano player myself. I still am. And I, uh, I just felt like, like, you know, the bit, the ability to go any direction whenever it took, you know, I thought Robin Williams was a master. I thought Richard Pryor was a master of that too. You know, um, he really lived in a vulnerable, un a vulnerable place in his life. And when he did his movies, um, we got to see a real authentic side of him. And I thought that was like, you know, you know, because when you do comedy, you could be real easy. You could, it's real easy to be big. It's real easy over the top. And, uh, for me, I thought Richard Pryor, Gene Wilder, um, Robin Williams, they were always grounded. And they always delivered, you know, all the time. Not some of the time, not none of the time, all of the time. So I found those guys, me, me falling in love with their craft and their work and kind of studying those lines of, of what they did. Okay, that's, that's excellent. And now I'm, I'm going to kind of switch gears a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because not only are you an actor, you're you're also a producer, right? You're a producer on Switch Up. You've produced TV shows. You've produced film before. So I'm I'm curious from like a producer slash actor perspective. I I gotta ask this for my Black Summer fans. Sure. The show has not been renewed for another season yet. I'm hoping yet. <laughs> Can you share any insights or maybe um? Any any of your thoughts into the decision making process behind if there's a renewal or not, and whether there's hope? There's always hope. There's always hope. Um, what happens is that for audiences don't might not understand when you work with a uh, a network. In this case, that was Netflix. Um, they're even though it's a Netflix original, is it? They're really. Um, uh, they operate almost like a distribution company and they're really almost like leasing your movie, leasing your project. That's why sometimes you'll see a project like, um, like jump to another network. Right. And so that's why I said that there's always hope, but like, I think that happened with, um, my God, um, uh, the, the, uh, the Magnum PI series, uh, with, with Jay Hernandez, he, um, they were, I believe on, CBS originally and they jumped to NBC. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, there's always hope is it, it really, what it is, is the network wants to have, um, you know, they might have a, a, a skeleton idea of how long we can ride this one out, you know? Um, and in their mind, it might be one, two, three seasons, maybe. And then they're already looking for the next thing. But they have no clue what's going to become a hit in the beginning. So that's what that's why like a Game of Thrones on HBO is mm -hmm. a ma massive hit, right? And so then they have to start write, writing, you know, the next chapters um, and the next series because they weren't prepared for that. 
you know, I think um, uh, Seinfeld did that when for NBC. You know, they they think that things are going to be one or two seasons, and all of a sudden, it turns into a mega hit. You know, so you know, as a producer, I find myself, you know, I expect every project I work on to be a mega hit. Mm -hmm. You want to go in there with your best, with your with your best foot forward, right? And um, and you know. When you have these meetings um, with these executives, you know, they're they're thinking analytics and you're thinking creativity. Right. And those two things, sometimes it's hard to mix. You know what I mean? And, and so sometimes you just have to stand your ground and just say, well, look, I, I see this project becoming the next Rocky, you know, and um so even though you might think it's going to be a a, a a one and done type situation, I'm looking at the future. So I, I think, you know, creators, story writers developing, they should take the time and, and not just think about the project that they're trying to promote, but also think about the part two, part three, part four, the episodic that it, that it could it could become because we have no clue what's going to what's going to become a hit. So it's better to be prepared. And, and 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 ready for that meeting you know then then come with just a you know well you know like a, i like like as if a one and done type situation you know you don't want to be a one hit wonder thank you for that i appreciate that well um, now i'm going to be mindful of your time i only have two more questions so no, shoot forgive me forgive me I, I really would be all over this my, my, i don't know what 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 really is hitting me these days but there might be a, I think there's a, a really bad flu going around. I'm in, I'm in the West Coast right now. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know where it came from, but it's here. I'm, I, trust me, I'm right there with you. I'm, I'm just <laughs> hiding it well. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, here's another question that that might be a little tough. So, if you, if you don't want to answer, and I understand. All right. Um, with platforms like Sora, right, the chat to video generation coming, uh, video generation thing that's coming out. As a producer, as an actor, what are your thoughts on the impact of AI adoption on traditional things like writing and acting? Well, AI is what you program it to be, right? So like any program that we already that already exists. And to be honest, AI has already existed for 20, 25 years already. Um, you know, they were using it in space technology, I think, 30 years ago. I mean, so you know, it's not like it's brand new. It is not. And we, right now, we already live in a digital world where everything's streaming and, 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 and I mean, at an ultra speed, it's never gone this fast ever. You know, movie making industry, you know, even the, even the music industry, it's all just goes straight to your, to your, uh, I think, what do you, there's no more record labels almost. They, they, they it goes, your songs go straight to streaming platform. So, Again, AI is something that we program, you know, and you can't program emotion. That's the one thing. You can give it a couple things. You can give it like, okay, the, you can give it comedy. You can give it um, darkness. You can give it um, kindness. You can give it certain qualities, but you can't program an emo a human emotion for it to change like a human. So as a human species, we are um, still, you know, trying to be a human species. So we have to be mindful of what we create and mindful of how we use it. You know, we don't want to, you know, you don't want to create something that replaces you. You know what I mean? And 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 if if you are working for others that are that that's where the mind is at, that they're, they're because they're not thinking of the human soul or the human spirit what they're thinking about is money and how fast the future can m make them more money so but uh, keep in mind all that is replacing labor you know ai will replace labor it will replace jobs it'll replace you know everything that we know as we speak you know even interviews even hosting even acting and it will take over if you allow it to now Will that make it better? Will that make it worse? I, I believe that it can be at a, an extremely high quality, but it won't be human. 
And if we want to see human interaction, then we have to continue to be in human life for them. I mean, and, and I know that social media, a lot of people do social media so fast, they forgot that that um, the, the, the first thing about social media is the social part. You know, you have to be social. It's not just what you do on your social media. It's the social part. Are you are you still willing to open your door and make a phone call and, and, and share and break bread with somebody and, and, and just be with somebody? The camaraderie of just being together with other people. If you're not willing to do that, then you're not doing social media. Now you're just doing media. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, we have to be mindful of these things because, you know, you don't want to lose that. You know, you don't want to lose that. That's that's the most important thing that we'll ever have in this lifetime is our soul. Man, you just gave me some food for thought about my social media. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So um it, I'm I'm still gonna, you know, I'm still gonna be mindful of time and everything. Um you you still have a lot of projects coming up, right? Switch up, everybody should see that. I love that movie. I got my review on the movie blog. Go check this movie out. Um I know you have like more projects in the future in the pipes though right you got brooklyn all american you got brothers of justice um are there any is there any specific project or roles that you're like really excited about uh, you know i well well like some of those roles you mentioned they're all great great characters those are great great storylines the thing about movie making and even the tv show world it takes a long time you know sometimes you can have an overnight you know uh, uh, machine pickup, but for the most part, it could take four or five years for those, for the budget and the cast and the crew and availability, all those things to come together, and even the location. Um, so, you know, I get attached to so many things. I get so many directors and producers call me and say, "Sal, we want you in this and want you in that," and I read my scripts, and I a lot of them I say no to. Um, uh, because some are just, you know, I don't think it's worth, uh, telling the story for myself, you know, it could be good for somebody else, but, um, but the ones I do say yes to are, are really rich, rich stories. And I'm, I'm these days I've been priding myself in picking projects that are really dealing with humanity, you know, um, like what we did with switch up, you know, I played the character Ty who's, who's, you know, dealing with a homeless, uh, situation for, running a shelter, living and breathing and eating in a shelter with, with families that are broken. You know, to me, that was uh, the, the reason why I picked that storyline because it was so rich to me. It's something what, that we deal with today. And uh, so the projects that I'm looking at now, even even some of my own personal ones that, that, I'm, that are in development as we speak, um, they are stories that are, you know, relatable, um, of relatable heroes, um, you know, villains with 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 a sensitive side. You know, they're 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 characters with conflict. They're characters that are that are dealing with things that you and I have dealt with all our life. You see what I'm saying? There's there's um there's uh of the world uh, of 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 a of, of minority world that we grew up in and that we live in, but. The audience has never got to see that world because for, you know, a hundred years of filmmaking, all they told was that was the Caucasian Anglo-Saxon side of things. They never told our side. So now we're living in a day and age um, that our producers, our storytellers, our, uh, our directors, our actors, our leading men and leading women are people of color. And you get a chance to hear these really, really rich stories. So I'm embracing that. Almost every project I work on is is a, is a bilingual. Um, almost every project I work on is is multicultural. You'll see every ethnicity in my movies. Um, also, you'll find out what it's like to, you know, to live in poverty. It's not just a one tone. You know, you'll have rich and poor. You'll have you'll have the 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 a lot of humility. I like I like comedy to to move pieces but sometimes you know there's uh dramas can tell the story better um but i'm trying to live my life and create these movies that are telling a lot of truth about the world that we live in so that's what that's what i that's what i have on the table 
uh, that's what I continue to work on. And, um, and I, I feel that, um, uh, I feel that the, the audiences will really, really take to it. I think they're going to fall in love with some of these characters that I'm creating. I think they're going to also, um, you know, be inspired for those young filmmakers that are out there that want to create their own stories and they're afraid that their voice might be too loud or too different. Um, I encourage them to just be, just be themselves, be honest and be true. And, um, I think that's what I'm doing with my stories now. Thank you for that. I, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate everything you're doing. I'm a huge fan. I'm, I'm with you for the rest of your career, whatever is your next project, like I'm, I'm covered <laughs> it. Um, so thank you so much for your time. Um, uh, I guess for my audience, any closing words or statements, any, any words of advice or will that? I do. I do want to, um, you, we should, we should get back Do a, let's do a visit in a couple months when I'm, I'm a little bit healthier. Yeah. And, and I want to, let's, let's take on some new questions, things that I want to answer for your audience. I don't want to cheat them out of a, 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 out of a, of a good educational show. There's so much, there's so much that I can share with you guys. Um, and I think, uh, I think we're going to need a part two for that. Um, I guess the one thing that if I can leave people with um, is that if we all could just um, try and be a better human being than what we were yesterday, if we all could just wake up with the willingness to do that, then mankind and, 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 and our age, our time, our present life will increase our our level of life will increase and it's not it, it's not a guarantee that that we're always going to be better but it's the willingness to be better it's the willingness and 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 i mean really just a better human being you know what i mean you know just better just 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 a little bit better and that little fraction will make a big big difference in the world that we're living in so that's what that's what i would like to ask from everybody Amen. Thank you so much for that. I'm definitely going to take you up on that part too. Thank you, every, um, Sal, for your time. Switch Up is out now. Everybody go watch it. Uh, we're going to keep an eye out for your next project. Thank you so much. This is Anthony with the Movie Blog and Sal with the Switch Up. Thank you, Anthony. All right. Have a wonderful afternoon. So let me hit stop. stop.